Now, I come back again uh, bearing, uh, should I call it good news? Yeah, uh, I believe that is visible enough. So I promise you I'll be doing this uh, economic calendar this way for the foreseeable future. And I really hope you like this format way better. So the time there, uh, the time on your, I hope you can see, uh, the time uh, there is in Kenyan time. So at least you shouldn't have a, a lot of, uh, what is it called? You shouldn't have a lot of uh, trouble actually deciphering the time. Okay, that is that. At least that is one adjustment I have done. So even if you check the time on your right hand side, left hand side, sorry, depending. I don't know whether the, vi the video will be mirrored on the other social media platforms, but if it's mirrored, if it, it will be on the right hand side. If it's not, then it's on the left hand side. And uh, let's just dive in straight to the economic calendar. Okay, so let's just dive straight into it. Okay, so you can see on Monday and Tuesday, no major news. So at least you can you can uh, put in your setups. You can at least uh, check the economic calendar, what is happening uh, for the rest of the week. At least you can now uh, put in your positions for the Canadian dollar. You can see the Canadian dollar. Uh, we have the interest rate decision on Wednesday, right? And on Thursday, uh, we'll get to that. But at least on Monday and Tuesday, you can rest assured there is no volatile news, okay? Uh, now, so let's start here on Wednesday. You can see the S&P Global US Manufacturing PMI is set to remain almost the same. Okay, uh, S&P Global Services PMI, Purchase of Managers Index, you can see it is at least uh, poised to a little to slow down a little bit. But in the event it doesn't slow down, it builds on our trade. Actually, I told people to buy uh, the S&P 500. And this is majorly why, okay? Uh, because these two, they measure, especially because US is majorly a manufacturing industry. So in the event these manufacturing numbers go up or they remain the same, it means at least the market has already, you know, uh, put in place or has already covered. Should I say covered? Has already at least, at least the market has already calculated uh, for all this, okay? Then uh, on six. On Tuesday, on Wednesday, sorry, you're going to be having the Bank of Canada interest rate decision. You can see the market is saying nothing will change. It will remain at 5%, which is good, okay? Then we have crude oil inventories. I don't know how many times I'll tell you this. This is a supply and demand thing. It's in the cost outline. It's in the full fundamental cost. You should get it. It's a very nice uh, thing. It covers uh, oil in detail, okay? Then we move on to Thursday. Deposit facility rate. Uh, let's leave that and now we come to the European Central Bank interest rate decision Okay, the interest rate decision you can see they all Remaining the same so anybody who wants to trade the euro at least you are you are a little bit safe Because you don't expect much volatility from there. Then we have GDP uh, For the US uh, you can see it is expected to drop from 4.9 to 2 percent Okay, so the economy is expected to shrink why? Because of interest rates are high, but the market is already pricing in for all this. Okay. Then we have initial jobless claims on the same day on Thursday. This will be, please note the number of news being released on that particular day. So if you're trading Euro USD, you have a 15 minute window before uh, the dollar starts becoming extra volatile. That's it. Okay. Then we have the ECB press conference uh, where we are going to where we are going to hear what. Uh, why they have decided either to increase cut or remain uh, the interest rates remain the same So you should listen to Miss Lagarde as she gives us an update on all of that As you can see initial jobless claims, how many people are filing? You can see the number is 199, expected 199,000 people filing for unemployment uh, claims Okay. Now on Friday we have a holiday in Australia and India then we have core PCE index. It's also another measure for inflation in the US. And as you can see, uh, it is expected, especially for the month of December, year over year, it is expected to drop. So this could actually help us vindicate our SM, uh, our S&P 500 buy, okay, our buy signal. So that is the economic calendar for the week. I don't think there is much, okay, I don't think there is much for me to add, but 
Uh, that's the calendar and that's how things are looking up, okay? So, by the way, the, the fundamental course is still there for you guys. Uh, it's a very good, uh, comp I'm the one who has done it, so I know it's quality uh, that I have provided in there. So, that's the economic calendar. I hope you trade uh, properly this week. And for those of you who are trading with me, just keep on holding uh we are we if you are new being a swing trader some of you are new swing traders don't panic don't worry it's part of the it's part of the it's part of the job okay it's part of the job so just hang in there we don't don't panic don't panic okay so with that allow me to end uh, the video there if you have any queries or questions kindly let me know in the comment section of whichever platform you find this on okay Whichever platform you find this on, kindly let me know if you have any question. Whether you want to join in uh, the Signal class, uh, not, not, not the Signal class, the Signal group. Uh, whether you want to join for classes, actually. Classes start in February uh, for, the fundament, for the crash course. Whether you want, uh, uh, what, what is it called? Whether you want to, for me to answer a question about the economic calendar, I will do so. So whichever uh, question you might have, feel free to ask and I will gladly answer you appropriately so that's the economic calendar for the week and that's the daily not the daily but the weekly update on deluxe capital so bye hope you have a very profitable week ahead